a Development Services Agency, or development as we commonly call it. We are so appreciative of our partnership with the Ohio Manufacturers Association and making today's webinar possible. We are also very appreciative of your time and willingness to join the webinar. We understand that your time is limited, especially during these unprecedented times. It is our hope that you will learn about our programs and services that are offered through the state of Ohio, and you are able to increase your sales into new markets. Before I introduce our next speaker, I would like to offer a few housekeeping remarks. The webinar is being recorded. Development will email a recording and the slide deck and a brochure for you to review after the event concludes in the next day or so. To ensure quality of the webinar, all participants have been muted. However, there's a Q&A chat in the, in, to, your, uh, to the right. So if you please enter your questions into the box and we will follow up with them after the session. So now it is my pleasure to introduce Nate Ward, Export Assistance Network Director. Nate is housed at the Small Business Development Center at Cleveland State University College of Business. Nate has a wealth of export knowledge that he has gained in the private sector and from years of counseling small businesses and his role as a director. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Sarah. Um, it's, it's really my pleasure to be with everyone here this afternoon. Uh, as Sarah mentioned, I, I've, uh, I'm just now coming into my eighth year of being a trade counselor, uh, working alongside um, all my colleagues at the Ohio Development Service Agency, working in the Ohio Small Business Development Centers, and of course our uh, sub-network, our Export Assistance Network. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background about myself, uh, let's see here. I think Tom gave me control to bring this. Yeah, terrific. So. Um, I'll give you a little bit about uh, a little background on myself and um, take you through the presentation to make sure everyone here understands how many myriad of ways uh, the state uh, we're connected with uh, all kinds of uh, local, uh, regional, and federal resources, all all with the mission of helping your company do more business internationally. We're we're, we're hoping to make it as cost effective, as quick as possible, as painless as it, as it can be. Um, because for all of you who um, do participate in it, you realize that international trade is none of those things. It's it's hard work. It is it can be expensive and um, and it can be daunting and and quite honestly just uh, mystifying at times. So we we want to not only share that information about how we um, uh, serve those functions, but afterwards when we uh, roll into the the question and answer and then we we'll go to the company panel, you'll hear from a couple of your peers who have uh, worked with us for a number of years and have uh, utilized some of those programs so you can hear firsthand uh, how, how companies have been taking advantage of a lot of things that uh, I'm about to lay out. So this is my direct contact detail. Um, so if, if anyone has an interest in reaching out to me, my, my email address is there, but I, I welcome uh, just looking at the list of the people who are, there's a few people, uh, names I recognize and we've had a chance to work in the past. Um, Beth and of course, Debbie and Don, hi, uh, Donna, Few of you here, um, a few names I don't recognize, but uh, especially if you're in the, the the Cleveland or Akron area, um, it's uh, my part of the state, and I'd be more than happy to connect with you and to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you to answer any any question you might have about this, or really just to to check in and see how things are going with your business. I, I know that uh, it's obvious that um, for most businesses, uh, it's it's been quite a crazy roller coaster of a year, but. Um, I will also be monitoring to the best that I can uh, the chat. I know we have time at the end to answer your questions directly, but um, you know, if you, if you do have a quick question or if you want me to slow down or speed up, um, I'll be trying to keep one eye on, on the chat function. But so um, I started to tell you a little bit about my background. So I, I come from a manufacturing background. I actually worked for several different manufacturers. Uh, my long tenure was working for a company called Vitamix based on the, the western suburbs of, uh, of Cleveland. And there I worked my way up. I started in customer service and uh, eventually got a coordinator role in uh, one of uh, three international departments they had. And, and eventually I got to, uh, I came up to the position of being um, a scout, essentially. I, I, my role was uh, scouting uh, new developmental opportunities focused mostly in Central and South America and sort of the farther flung parts of Europe. Um, and I'm also doing training, sales training for new distributors 
Uh, the team that I was on, we managed to budget about $14 million, um, and we had uh, somewhere around the neighborhood of 25 or so distributors worldwide. And so well, my role was um, in the developmental part of finding new markets, new territories. And, you know, to be honest, it was really in that capacity that I got to know a lot of the people who are now my peers, people who are trade counselors, uh, using services like the ones I'm about to take you through uh, to help bridge the gap, to help find and who would be those most appropriate partners for us in those countries that maybe we didn't already have some established relationships. And, and of course, it was through through my uh, my time in private sector that yeah, I had the firsthand knowledge of working with uh, these people. And, and now that I'm on the side of being a trade counselor, um, you know, it's it's my, my pleasure and uh, brings me great satisfaction to help companies, um, you know, take those steps and, and get into those foreign markets like um, you know, some of the, my predecessors helped me in my private sector days. So, like I said, this this is really a recap of to explain how your state, Ohio, helps uh, particularly manufacturers, but also if, if you happen to be a service provider in this this call, you know, you're welcome here too. But if I'm honest, the vast majority of our clients are manufacturers. Uh, they're companies that produce something that's of high quality, that's in demand, not only in regionally or in the United States, but um, has demand outside the United States. And and of course, you know, when you're trying to sell a tangible good and you have to clear customs and the logistics, there's just so many pieces that complicate uh, that sales process. And so I think that's perhaps one reason why we really tend to get to know manufacturers very well. But like I said, if you're a service provider, we also work with engineering companies and um, in some cases, legal services, logistics companies. Um, so you're, everyone's welcome. We, 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 won't, uh, we won't discriminate. In case you didn't realize it, uh, you know, uh, the state of Ohio is an exporting powerhouse. We have been for many years the top exporting state. Um, and as you can understand, I've been a little bit of a leveling, leveling off in the last year with all kinds of different disruptions. Nonetheless, on average, we as a state combine for about $50 billion worth of exporting. And it's not just to a handful of countries, but we sell to uh, over 200 countries uh, around the world. Uh, there, are, there have been nine countries that uh, are traditionally at the top and receiving about a billion dollars worth of our export value. So, uh, you know, when I think about uh, those type of countries that we see again and again, um, we, we do have some increased focus on about 10 countries. But um, it, this is also one of the reasons why our state government has such an emphasis on promoting exports, of having our own dedicated export team uh, to, to know people, uh, and occasionally we'll have calls from people in other states. Uh, not every state is set up to have such a robust system in place for um, assisting businesses, but because export means so much to Ohio's businesses, that's, that's why we have a dedicated office to help companies in our state do more exporting. Perhaps not as a surprise as, as I kind of uh, foreshadowed here, a, a lot of our companies are manufacturers. And um, in, in my line of work, I regularly come across companies that are in uh, they sell into mining, into aerospace, into processed foods. Uh, gosh, uh, yeah, agricultural items, of all kind, um, household items. I mean, really, anything under the sun. I sometimes I, uh, I explain to people that you know when when I they, if they don't know what I do, I say, have you ever seen the the TV show uh, How It's Made? Or uh, you know that I feel like well, pre-COVID at least <laughs> I was going on a new factory tour every week or every other week with a, a new client. Um, you know, we, we from all of you, you, you make up that that body of people who are the the manufacturing base for our economy. And um, uh, you know, it, it's it's uh, it's my pleasure to not only get to know, but it's also kind of a challenge in each case to get to know what drives that industry, what drives uh, you know, your particular segments or niche uh, of that um, of, of your industry. And you know, what what never ceases to surprise me is, and maybe maybe you find yourself feeling that this this describes you, but. Um, so often when I meet a new client, they say, well, you know, we serve a really, you know, niche area. No one does what we do. And um, any more days, I, I feel that from the, the perspective of servicing manufacturers, but also servicing mostly, uh, you know, um, small to medium sized companies, that's our bread and butter. Um, if you're a company and you're listening to this webinar and you say, I think they could never understand exactly what we do. We're, you know, we're, we're rock stars in our field. But we're a really narrow slice of, you know, w whatever your field is. I'd say that that's actually par for the course, and um, uh, and and that's actually what we're used to, and um, uh, you know you won't catch us off guard at, uh, with that at all. All the more reason why, if at all possible, we're probably going to want to arrange a visit and to see you firsthand, and uh, hopefully you, you can open up your doors and, and provide us a factory tour. I know it's become a lot more challenging these days, but um, better times we hope. 
So uh, to this point, I've kind of been giving you the background as to, you know, uh, who we are, but uh, what, what do we do? Um, over the years, the eight years I've been doing this, um, for, for companies that I work with, we traditionally send out a survey asking those companies, uh, what's holding you back from doing more exporting? And very often what those companies say is they tell us three things. They say, uh, we, we don't, we, we don't have the know-how, uh, in-house. We're not quite sure how to, you know, break into some new market, Latin America, Mexico, wherever it's going to be, European Union, uh, so the know-how piece. They also say, um, the resources, either from uh, a time perspective or from a financial perspective. Um, and, and then the last one is the opportunity. So they, they don't even know like who this begins talking to. And so those are three things that we hear so commonly. And, and I think that's the state of Ohio has done a tremendous job of lining up a couple of programs to address each one of those things in turn. So let me take you through these. The top one is the Export Assistance Network. This is myself as a trade counselor, and I'll share with you the map of all the trade counselors who, who also do the same thing that I do. We are your first go-to. We are meant to be the ones who are coming to get to know you, visiting you, um, getting to know kind of what your opportunities are, what your problems are, and to help you size up that opportunity. Is how, what are different ways that other companies have handled tackling that, that issue or that opportunity? Maybe we can even connect you with another company that can share their know-how and um, how, how, how to handle that issue, um, all the way up to helping you plan out a strategy. Um, but we also run something called the International Market Support Program, our in-country contractor services. We have the Ohio Export Internship Program, and we also run various grants, uh, the Ohio Image Grant, and I'll get into each one of these in turn. Um, this is the, the, the roster of all the different trade advisors, so I'll leave this up here for a second, but um, hopefully uh, the name that I put up is someone that you've connected with. If you're in the Northwest and the Southwest, the Central Ohio, um, wherever you find yourself, um, there's, there's trade counselors based all throughout the state, and um, you hear the, the contact details for all of my counterparts. Who are our typical clients? Well, for the most part, they tend to be established businesses. Many of them are family-owned and multi-generation. Um, very often, they're 20 to 120 employees, just on average. Um, very often, we have long-term relationships with our clients, um, and there's a whole lot of them more manufacturers. I posted here a couple of pictures of Fuku and Morgan. So these happen to be two interns that we placed, uh, and these are pictures, pictures taken on site uh, during internships that they served out. But these are the types of settings and the types of companies that are very often um, our, our bread and butter clients. So if you fall outside of these parameters, you know, don't, uh, not to worry, you know, we, we work with people who are single owner operator companies, and we also work with companies that are several hundred employees in size. But if I had to say, you know, our 80, 20, 80% of our companies probably fall within this range. So what do we do? I mentioned the, the, the counseling. So as part of the small business development centers, each one of us is a trained consultant, um, we're here to provide you with free confidential uh, consulting services, um, and very often we're helping companies through any one of these topics, compliance, documentation, logistics. What, if it has to do with international trade in any, fo in any manner, um, we're happy to speak with you to either size up a future opportunity or to deal with a problem that, that you're dealing with uh, on hand. And um, in each case is a unique opportunity, I think, um, but that's part of the fun for us of, of helping companies uh, sort through all those issues and opportunities. I mentioned that we have in-country contractors. So um, for several years now, our international market support program, uh, when I started this eight years ago, we had, I think, just a handful of contractors. I think we covered like five countries. Uh, but because of promotion and right use, um, and also buy-in from, I think, our state government, uh, we've been able to expand that. So now we're over 80 countries uh, when we have in-country contractors. And for any of you who know Tom Bainbridge, who's um, you know, the host of this program, he's the program manager for the IMS. And it, the purpose of this is, this is again, a free service for um, eligible Ohio companies. And our main purpose is to uh, to do the, the dirty work, the, the down on the ground type of work to evaluate markets, to vet prospective uh, customers or partners for you. Uh, and then eventually to introduce you to those those highest prospects and you know, if you need translation services or whatever it is, um, this has been a really popular service since the pandemic set in. Uh, I think in, in part because so many people are home, no one's having to deal with you know trade show schedules and things like that. Um, so this has been a really really popular service, and again, it's a free service for all Ohio companies. 
mentioned that we also run an internship program. This speaks to the, the resource building component of it. But uh, a few years ago, um, you know, probably about 10 years ago, we realized that there was an uh, unmet uh, need for companies, especially for small, medium-sized companies, who said, gosh, if we only had someone on our staff who was trained in international trade or, if, you know, we, we had more time to answer the, uh, the emails or the phone calls or whatever that would come in from foreign places. Uh, so we, we pioneered this program of hand-selecting up-and-coming uh, bright undergraduate and, and now graduate students who are studying international business, and we are putting them through our own boot camp class of sorts, and we are teaching them the fundamentals of international trade, and we've learned uh, what, what companies are really looking for. And so now we're going into our, gosh, I guess it's our ninth year now, or it must be coming up on 10 years on this, where every year we have about 50 students that we um, hand-select throughout the state and through a really competitive process. We train them up in a spring class, and at Cleveland State, I'm on the point of contact. Um, we're, one of four, we're one of four sites where we're teaching these students. Um, and at the same time, we're going out, we're vetting companies, we're finding what companies need, and through a matchmaking service, we're placing those interns to work in companies for summer internships. Uh, and, and the state uh, uh, ad, sweetens the pot. We, we get 50% of an intern stipend back to any company that um, successfully hosts our interns for a 12-week period. And I can't speak enough about um, how how this has just done a tremendous job of building up our workforce, building up our competency, giving students a real tangible uh, um, you know, way to contribute to the economy and, and really to prove themselves. And, and more often than not, uh, companies, or I should say almost as often as not, companies have been able to successfully um, keep those students on either by extending their internship or, or every, every year we've got multiple companies that are sending full-time offers to these students because they just become so much of an added value to their, their to their organization. So applications are open right now for companies to apply to host a, a summer intern for next year. Uh, but at this point, we have all the students selected. And we're really excited about our students, some real bright students coming through. We've gotten a lot of questions about grants. So there are financial pieces uh, involved. And um, there, most people are probably aware of the, um, the International Market Access Grant for Exporters, the IMAGE grant, which is part of the State Trade um, Expansion Program, the, the federally funded step program. Um, and if you don't know about it, this, this is um, the, the grant that's open to most general exporters um, who are based in Ohio. You can receive up to $10,000 back on developmental projects. In years past, what companies have been using this for is um, to help pay down uh, the, the cost of doing international trade shows, both for the registration cost, for the um, cost of shipping product and samples to their booth and things like this. And, and even cutting down on um, subsidizing the international travel to visit foreign markets. Well, since all those things have gone out the window until further notice, uh, there have been many modifications to what company can uh, claim against the image grant, um, with a heavy bulk of it going towards uh, marketing, online transformation, digital advertising, training programs. So I really encourage you to, um, to go to the link, uh, image.development.ohio.gov, uh, to um, to review all the different changes and how we are, we're really trying to make this as flexible as possible uh, to give companies uh, every advantage they can to uh, make it less expensive to invest in international development. And the, the other notable thing is this year, the uh, application window closes a bit earlier. Uh, it's going to close on December 11th. So uh, if you haven't already looked into this, I highly encourage you to um, go to the Image Grant uh, website to, um, uh, to submit your application as soon as you can. Um, there are a couple of other um, probably lesser known grants that are out there. Uh, there is also something called the Appalachian Export Development Program. Now, this is something that's only open to companies that are um, uh, located in um, um, what's known as Appalachia, Ohio. Oh, my apologies. What's happening here? Okay. Sorry about that. Someone's going to call me in the web. So, uh, is based in Appalachia, Ohio, which covers roughly um, the eastern third of the state, so all the way down um, all the counties that are touching Pennsylvania, uh, West Virginia, um, and, and those just to the southeast of Columbus and to the to the east of Cincinnati. Um, there is there are a, there is a separate smaller grant that mirrors in a lot of ways the image grant, um, but I, I'd encourage you if you're based or you, you think you're based in one of those uh, counties to visit this link um, to go to the Appalachian Export Development Program grants. We can't do it by ourselves. So um, because of the, the, how many companies there are for all the diversity of all the industries, we heavily rely on other um, 
uh, cooperators and network partners, uh, started first and foremost with the U.S. Commercial Service. For any of you who've worked with the U.S. Department of Commerce office, either out of uh, Cleveland or um, uh, Columbus or, or Cincinnati, um, I, we, we talk with these people all the time, and, and you know they are our counterparts at the federal level. I think Peter asked whether or not this presentation would be available to us afterward. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Peter. Uh, we, we will be sure to not only get a copy of this presentation, but the recording that is happening right now to all the attendees that registered. Absolutely. Um, but the U.S. Department of Commerce, um, we will frequently co-host programs with them and, uh, and advertise their, uh, their, their services because, again, we're all part of the same ecosystem. And additionally, if your company does processed foods, um, the Food Export Association, ultimately part of the U.S. Department of Agriculture, um, there is a whole other set of programs, grants, uh, market entry, you name it, that's specifically dedicated to processed food manufacturers. Um, so if that's at all of an interest. The Council of Great Lakes Governors and St. Lawrence um, Premiers is also uh, a regional cooperator. They're based out of uh, Chicago, but um, there is an international trade advocation uh, component for that organization. And, and so we were oftentimes promoting the trade missions that they're hosting. And they usually host uh, multiple trade missions every year, circumstances permitting. Um, not only that, but the U.S. Small Business Administration and the Exim Bank of the United States, if, if uh, any of you are familiar or heard those names before, but there are multiple trade finance options. And we could do a whole other presentation on how many different sort of tricks and I don't want to call them loopholes exactly, but there's many uh, financial um uh, techniques that your company may consider employing to help make the cost of uh, financing your international trade development a little bit easier. So why do companies need us? Well, you know, as I kind of alluded to in the beginning, for logistical help, for trade conflicts, a uh, product has been stuck in, in market. If, company, if you've gotten a solicitation from someone, you're not quite sure, is this a legit uh, prospect, is it not? Um, problems clearing customs, what paperwork would be required, et cetera, certifications, registrations, law, patents, um, and just generally selling and shipping internationally is way different than in the U.S. If you're listening to this webinar and your company has never exported before, um, but you, you have an interest in it or you think that there's a high potential, we'd love to have a conversation with you to help uh, make sure that you're, you're, you're looking in the right direction and you're really aware of what would be all the requirements that either you'd be responsible for or maybe you need to find another partner that can help you overcome some of those other um, administrative um, requirements that you'd otherwise have to have to um, to fulfill before you can make the ship the shipment to make the shipment happen. International is by nature it's risky, it's expensive, but you know we do it because it can be financially rewarding. Um, nothing nothing warms my heart more than when companies have really become they come into their own, they've realized their their export goals, and um, you know they find themselves the the recipient of a substantial proportion of their revenues coming from international sources, and that's really what our goal is. Uh, for all of our clients. Let me just give you a couple of you know, concrete examples of what we've done um, in case you know, you're wondering. So there, there's a company that's based in um, uh, Lake County and uh, they're a distributor of uh, different processed foods, fish foods, different pet foods. Um, and they had a, a network of distributors in the European Union, uh, but they were looking to uh, find their own uh, distribution hub. So uh, my center took the first lead on this, and we narrowed down which country or which region of the European Union would it make the most sense for them to identify a distribution hub. And then after we made our recommendation, and you know the company was was convinced by our uh, convinced enough to take the next step, we handed it off to the international market support uh, team, and they did an on-ground uh, search for um, logistic centers um, in in the in the two countries that we identified being the top prospect. And, and the company um, went forward with it, and they, they chose a, a fulfillment center for them. And that really has simplified their the distribution and it helped them get more products into the market at a lower cost, and they were able to, on the whole, reduce their freight cost. Um, this is an example from a company that's in Stark County, a company that uh, participated in our export accelerator program. They were having some uh, design issues with um, what you see here is a plastic welding machine. and uh, through our network, we were actually able to uh, recommend them to another one of our clients that was also in welding, not a competitor, but of the same category. And actually, this photo is of a, a um, their top selling product that they redesigned on the advice of the designer that our other client had worked with. So sometimes what I'm trying to say is that our our, our value isn't just in the direct knowledge that we can provide your company, uh, but there's a fair chance that you know, we may know of another company statewide, perhaps, that um, uses 
uses a resource that your company would find valuable. And this is kind of um, on, on the extreme angle of finding, finding a, a, a product engineering company for a product redesign. It was a fantastic, uh, um, you know, success story for us. But more often than not, it, it's, it's the small things. It's making a recommendation to a translation company or making a recommendation to a documentation company or, or a legal expert in something. So, you know, we want to be a connecting body to help your company uh, get to those resources. And, and very often we're trying to refer them back to local Ohio companies as well uh, to keep the business in Ohio and, and to make sure that uh, you're, you're getting service, um, a reliable service uh, that, um, you know, strengthens your ability to, to get into market and to be competitive as you can be. So in addition to the consulting and all the other programs that we refer companies to, we also provide our own individual training. So in this case, these are trainings that are offered through my center out of Cleveland, but all my counterparts I shared with you before have their own um, direct offering within the region. So um, all of us offer direct uh, technical training. So uh, we, we have a five-day uh, technical seminar that we put on out of Cleveland. Um, just last Tuesday, we um, – co-sponsored an event with Amazon, uh, the Amazon Global Selling Platform. We had about 100 attendees for that. So we're always putting out training opportunities for uh, on direct specific topics. Uh, we also promote something called the Certified Global Business Professional Training. And this is really um, a, an all intensive, um, a comprehensive training, which is meant for the individual who finds themselves at their desk, responsible for all kinds of international trade uh, responsibilities and tasks, but they, you know, they've never been trained in it. They never went to school for international business. Maybe you've got, you know, a BA or or, or, or another kind of a business degree, but you never really studied international business. This is really the, the class that's meant for you. We'll take you through all the different aspects of international trades, best practices, from logistics, patents, selling, pricing, whatever it is, all through the lens of international trade. And that's one that we're offering in from January to March. It's going to be a self-directed um, study. Um, but we give you guides and things like this. And if you wanted to go on to get a professional certification at the end, we, we explain how you can do that. Um, and then the last one I'll mention here is our Global Target Program. This is one that we've been putting on for almost 15 years, and it, it is our Everything in the Kitchen Sink program. It's one that's open to any Ohio company, and um, really the, the, the thrust of it is that we, we work with other uh, cooperators, the U.S. Department of Commerce is involved, um, but we also have a panel of about 10 mentors who are business experts that volunteer their time, uh, we've got mentors uh, that have come from all different types of industries, uh, but we'll put together a mentor team, and we work with your company, the leaders of your company, along with a multitude of other people that you designate to be part of your, your export management team, and we share with you, uh, help you develop an export strategy. Uh, that's for a program that lasts uh, for a little less than a year. It's about a seven-month-long commitment, um, and it, it is seven thousand. It is several thousand dollars. It's three thousand dollars for a company to sign up, but there are also um, grants and subsidies available for you to, to uh, lower the cost of that. So, and of course, we're, we're open to customized training at any point. So um, the last thing I'll mention here is that um, as it is right now, because of the um, the CARES Act, uh, our center is, is also, we've hired a slate of, um, uh, of consultants here that have a variety of specialties from um, uh, finance and accounting to international trade to um, uh, intercultural training, uh, human resources, cybersecurity, and uh, and marketing. So uh, this is a special program that we're offering because of CARES Act funding, that basically our center has hired these individuals and their companies uh, to work for Ohio's businesses uh, at no cost to to your company. So we're basically loaning out these uh, these consultants to work for you on various projects. So please you know, email me or, or call me if you'd like more information about this. There are a couple of conditions and so forth. Uh, but this is something we have funding through the end of next September to offer, so I'm happy to do that. Um, so there, there are a couple of we're, we're really hoping to, you know, we're hoping that things turn around 2021 as, as everyone is. Um, there are a number of trade missions. Um, they are right now scheduled to be in-person trade missions uh, or, um, I'm sorry, trade shows um, that uh, we're, we're promoting and we're aggressively trying to position Ohio to have a strong presence there. Um, it's yet to be seen how many of these will happen in person, as we hope. Of course, fingers are crossed. But um, here's a listing of just a few that we're, we're hoping. Uh, the Japan trade, trade trade platform I'll mention isn't the trade promotion in so much as uh, it's, a, it's an online platform to be connected with um, Japanese uh, buyers, and uh, that's, that's a special initiative of the governor. 
Um, I know I'm, it's it's already 1.30, and I don't want to take time away from questions and answers. Um, I, I did have a whole s uh, other segment about getting ready for export, but uh, Tom, at the risk of uh, running over, uh, I'd, I'd like to maybe uh, save this part for the end if there's time. But um, I, I, what I really want to make sure that I, I got across was how many different resources there are available out there for companies. And, and, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this, the first point of contact is to reach out to your regional trade counselor. If you're in the Cleveland area, um, I'd be your person. But in, in other parts of the state, um, uh, I'd, I'd recommend if you haven't started a relationship with them, we're happy just to have a, an opening discussion with you to get the ball rolling, to find out kind of where you're at, what what are your goals, your aspirations, and what might be some hurdles that we have to kind of plan through and work around. Um, but ultimately our goal is to get you into a lot of these programs and grants, excuse me, to line it up so that you're taking every advantage, you're taking every uh, um, every wind at your back that you can get to make the process easier, more understandable, more strategic, and ultimately less expensive for your company. So Tom, if I can, I, I'd like to like maybe um, cut it there, and I don't know if we have time for, um, for questions or how you want to do this. Well, at this point, if anyone has any questions, um, Please feel free to put it into the Q&A section. And... Well, if it's not, I can keep okay. going if, uh, if we got more time. Go ahead, Nate. Okay, all right. So I'll, I'll try to, to get through this without uh, belaboring these points. So what the next part of this that I wanted to take companies through, it, this is this is now less of a focus on what are the resources available, but this is maybe a little bit of time for self-reflection. Then we'll also talk a little bit about what are some points that you may be considering if you're getting started in exporting or you're starting to get serious about exporting. So, you know, okay, as I mentioned previously, there are, you know, about 12 or so countries that we do serious business with. Um, and not to disparage any of, any of the rest of the countries that are out there, um, but you, what you see here is, you know, we as a country in the United States, we're a, we're a top exporting country. Maybe this is for all the headlines that go into how we're a top importer, which, you know, we are neck and neck with China as far as a value of import. We're also number two in export. So it's, it's nothing to sneeze at. Um, uh, now, about 90% of all that export comes from small to medium-sized companies uh, by number. But of course, by value, it's really the, the Fortune uh, 500 companies that are driving the volume of it. But nonetheless, it is not something that's just related to uh, the, the big companies to participate in export. This is actually something a lot, a lot of um, U.S. companies know how companies participate. Where the trade goes, um, this is to kind of give you a visual of you know what the flow of trade is. Uh, the biggest uh, um, trade today is actually uh, between the United States and Canada. It's been a gap that's been shrinking for some time, but it's no surprise that for the majority of companies that we speak with, uh, the number one country that almost everyone is doing business with is Canada. That's not to be overlooked. Canada has its own rules and regulations. And very often after that, we find a lot of companies that are, you know, kicking around the idea of doing business in Mexico just by, by proximity. Uh, but very often what we find is that um, after Canada, the, the next most likely landing point is the United Kingdom uh, and, and, um, and, and other places in Europe. Um, but here you see this is just kind of in general what the flow of trade has been uh, across different regions around the world. You know, this is, this is really how the story starts for a lot of companies. When if you're the type of company here that you are, you're a leader in your field, and, and for, for many of the companies that become our longstanding clients, they say, hey, like, we are, we are the um, – the, the, the top name brand, we're the top provider, we are par excellence, um, uh, you know, the industry leader. And when you're in that position, when you're that company that does things and you're you're the envy of the rest of the companies in your field, you're creating a value. And whether or not you're trying to sell your product into foreign markets, once the word gets out through visibility, through a trade show, through your website, whatever, People in other countries say, hey, we'd love to have that too, either to use it or because it will make us money and we'd like to sell it into our region. So the sign of something valuable is everyone wants it. And so that should be the natural pull that gets you into other markets. And, you know, sometimes the trigger happens when your company redoes the website and you redo your search engine optimization. There has been some changes that used to be a lot more straightforward, but now search engines are getting more sophisticated. So that isn't always the trigger. Participation in a trade show. Um, 
it could be even something as simple as um, 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 bringing in a new employee who has um, skills or, or past uh, relationships in another country. Um, or it could be publication, an uh, international publication like um, here, Export USA, what used to be called Commercial News USA. Well, I want you to ask yourself, you know, wh which one of these do you find yourself in? Uh, this is, we participate in kind of an export readiness assessment for every new client. Um, but we'll ask your company, do you already sell your product or service regionally? Do you sell it nationally? Or are you already receiving inquiries from abroad, maybe unsolicited? Uh, inquiries. Um, have you created a strategy around your international business? Ha have you dedicated funds to it? Have you assigned the task to anyone in particular in your company? And of course, have you already started selling nationally to this point? And if you have, maybe it's time for you to consider creating an export strategy. And so um, I highly recommend uh, looking up this. This is the, the SBA Export Business Planner. And uh, you, can, you can download it for free. It's a PDF. It's kind of a monster of a document, but it is thorough. And it, it is, it's easy to follow in that it's kind of a workbook. It'll ask you a lot of questions. And what I'd like to suggest to companies is, you know, leaf through it um, and maybe find a chapter that really speaks to you. One of the most common ones is how do you find and vet the appropriate international trademark? Something as simple, it's page 67. Go look it up. It's <laughs> one of the top 10 questions or so uh, that you should want to ask a, a potential international trade partner uh, and, and and that already gets you on the right foot and makes you look a lot more, um, you know, savvy or, or experienced than perhaps you are. Um, but you're, 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 this would be the first logical next step to get you um, in the role of um, following um, best practices for international trade. And then when you do that, develop an export plan. Get to know your domestic customers. Who's the one that typically buys from international or domestically today? What's driving the sales? It never ceases to amaze me how many companies aren't aware of these things. Um, and then, you know, start limiting. Which products do you think you'll offer? I, we don't often recommend that you're trying to go after too many markets at once. We're trying to sell all of your products at once. It, it, it'll make your whole job and make your life a lot easier. Try narrowing it down to one or two markets that you're really interested in. And what are those, the products or services you, you sell that you're going to lead with? Not just dumping a catalog on that, that market. So there are lots of risks, though. There's political risks, there's IP risks, financial risks, there's compliance risks. And I'm not going to go through each one of these. It's, it maybe is an intuitive idea that it, um, international business comes with it and, and built in its DNA, the risks. And that's part of our job as trade counselors to make sure that your company is aware of all those risks factors to the appropriate level that it applies to your company, your industry, and your products. Uh, and of course, we have many tools to do this. This is just a snapshot of COFAS. Um, this is international, um, uh, um, it, it's actually an insurance company, but they do uh, risk evaluation for default. And there's all kinds of measures like this that, uh, again, we could sift through and, and help your company understand, uh, you know, as you're laying out your international strategy, uh, which con countries make more sense for you and maybe which other ones don't. That's not all. I mean, there's, there's so many other free resources, too, and paid-for resources, uh, country commercial guides and Department of Commerce. Uh, the World Bank and other NGO organizations publish every year surveys on, on the changing landscape of companies. And then many of our centers have paid for services on the right side. This is something called Euromonitor. This is one of a couple of paid for databases that our center has access to that gives, in some cases, very granular information about what's driving trends in different markets uh, for, for um, you know, different industries and products. And, you know, even, like I said, you know, no issue is too small for us. Even the idea of figuring out what's called landed cost for your product. Um, if it's pricing or logistics, pricing that into your product to find out how competitive you can be or what, what the competitive landscape will be or, or, you know, that's even the degree to which we could get granular in, in servicing your company. And so, uh, you know, running these land of cost analyses like uh, like this is the kind of thing that um, we, we do on a regular basis for companies. But once again, I just want to um, um, share with you again, you know, the local contacts. Um, so if you haven't already uh, sort of uh, figured out which, which uh, trade counselor is in your area. If you haven't connected with them, I highly encourage you after uh, maybe sometime later this afternoon or tomorrow, give them a phone call and introduce yourself, and they can get you started on any one of the things I've mentioned here today. And, and lastly, this is uh, a number of the links that I share with you in this presentation. I won't take up any, any more of your time. I apologize for going over a little bit here, but um, thank you for your attention. And again, I, I sincerely look forward to speaking with any of you that have got questions.
Nate, thank you so much for your insight. It's so helpful, and um, I'm sure that there are a lot of companies on the phone that are sitting there thinking that they're going to reach out to their trade counselors. So we really appreciate you getting those uh, everything moving, the gears moving. So um, next, for our second half of the presentation, we have a panel discussion that will be led by Tom Bainbridge, who's my coworker. He is the um, export program manager for the International Market Support Program. And Tom um, will take a moment to introduce his program, but also uh, introduce our panelists. We are so fortunate that we have um, amazing companies and clients that are willing to talk about their experiences with our programs. So thank you, Tom. Thank you, Sarah. Um, <clears throat> she was so kind to say I was a colleague. She's actually my boss um, and does a wonderful job. Um, Mark and Chad, can you join us? Are you able to get on? Okay. So afraid that we're having some technical difficulties. So um, thank you both for joining us. Um, you, uh, you've been uh, a loyal customer, a loyal client of ours, and I, um, I know that we've uh, given you a benefit. Um, Nate, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, a couple of things that I want to mention. We do have some uh, virtual trade missions that we are um, sponsoring specifically one to the UAE, another one to um, the, the UK coming up soon. Um, but I won't spend a whole lot of time on that. Um, I do want to give our um, our friends here, Mark and Chad, an opportunity and products um, uh, to to start things off. So I'm going to let uh, Mark go first from Kayvac, and please go ahead. Thanks, appreciate the uh, opportunity to share a story. Um, so I started with uh, Kyvac in 2012 to help grow our international activities. Uh, we are a manufacturer of cleaning machines, uh, niche specialized cleaning machines uh, located out of Hamilton, Ohio. And um, we specialize in some restroom cleaning, commercial kitchen cleaning, and some hard surface floor cleaning solutions. So. We've got some really neat products that are incredibly relevant, especially in the days of COVID, where um, you know we can have some pretty high impact on soil removal and, and so forth. With that being said, uh, you know my first experience actually was with uh, the power Department development going on the Great Lakes mission trip to the Middle East, where we did a partner search and interviewed a number of potential candidates from the UAE, from Qatar, from Saudi Arabia, from Bahrain. And the state of Ohio is wonderful from the standpoint of helping connect us with a local organization that arranged uh, not only to help us prospect for the partners within our industry category, but then also to arrange face-to-face in-market interviews uh, when we took the trip. Um, this is something that they've also helped facilitate remotely uh, in, in Central America and in Europe uh, periodically over the time as well. So we've uh, benefited from the Ohio Department of Development in a number of ways. We're currently working with them on a project to uh, understand the landscape of selling uh, cleaning detergents for our machines in the European market and the reach uh, specifications and so forth. So. Uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, I think I heard mentioned earlier how uh, there's collaborative interactions as well with the U.S. Department of Commerce. Um, I'm a member of the Southern Ohio District Export Council and understand basically the, the benefits of what the state of Ohio brings to the table versus the U.S. Commercial Services Program. And I just give a huge thumbs up to what the state of Ohio has done to support the activities of uh, Ohio companies that really do want to spread their wings and explore uh, doing international business. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I have a number of thoughts that I can elaborate on as it relates to whether or not knowing if your company is prepared to do this uh, from an infrastructure standpoint, from a internal, um, you know, buy-in from the different stakeholders and how those conversations work and how to help build some cross-functional um, 
cooperation between the different parties that are going to influence whether or not your company can be successful in the international. So um, there's questions about that or if there's interest to elaborate on that further, um, I can. But I think as it relates to what the state of Ohio brings to the table, uh, it's been a really great experience. We participated in the state of Ohio image grant uh, program for several years, uh, enabling us to consider activities and projects uh, that we might not have otherwise uh, due to, you know, ROI and, and financial commitments. So the image grant program is something that I encourage you all to learn about as well. So um, I will take a step back and turn it back over to you, Tom. Thank you uh, very much. <clears throat> I had the opportunity, uh, I think it was about a little bit more than a year ago, to uh, visit the facility in Hamilton, Ohio. And uh, I, I think Mark doesn't, um, well, I, I was absolutely fascinated by their products is, is how um, simple, but yet um, very innovative. Um, and the good news, as I said, uh, it does get rid of COVID. Um, it's fascinating stuff. Um, so, so Chad, um, why don't you give a brief introduction to yourself and the company and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Chad Gottschalk. I'm the International Accounts Manager at Bionics. Um, I have been with the company since 2012. Um, and since that time, I've really kind of watched the company grow from an international and domestic standpoint. So Bionics itself is a uh, medical device manufacturer. We, uh, we manufacture a lot of single-use disposable tools um, that you know, we're always constantly innovating and coming up with new ideas for new products um, based on clinical feedback and, and other things going on in the market. Um, as far as our reach internationally, I think Nate had alluded to it earlier that, you know, your primary exports when you're seeing companies is the Canadian market first. So when I started in 2012, very much so our biggest export market was Canada. Now over the past eight years, we've kind of expanded to, um, you know, we have some experience in Australia, uh, the whole of the European Union, Latin America, and uh, now learning some about Asia as well. So. Uh, this whole process has been great and looking forward to continuing exporting. So we obviously have um, kind of an issue right now in the world where not a lot of people are traveling. And you would think that, that we would just kind of sit back and, and wait for things to go on. But, you know, both of you um, have continued to, to increase your business development um, and specifically using our contractors in our inter international market support program. Um, Chad, can you can you talk a little bit about you know what we've done? Um, I guess let's just talk about you know since February and, and going into maybe even last week for that matter. Yeah, absolutely. So you know you mentioned you know sit back and wait, and I think everybody kind of thought that at the beginning, and then we realized this was going to be much more of a long term situation with COVID. So you know what does that mean? Nobody's traveling anywhere. It's becomes increasingly difficult to get in front of your end users and your, your distribution partners. You know, you can't go to any of the big trade shows or you can't even travel internationally um, due to policies on, you know, what countries are allowing, you know, what people in. So, um, you know, we, we started talking around that time and, and realized that there were all these contractors that we have utilized in the past and now more so than ever, you know, them having the ability to be local in their region reach out to companies in the local time zone, um, you know, from, you know, speak one native to another saying, hey, you know, we want to set up a meeting with this Ohio company. Um, and, and I think, Tom, we've done a lot of work in Latin America over the summer and, you know, made a lot of good connections in the Chilean market. Uh, now we're looking at Colombia as well. And, you know, I really think that sitting back and just hoping that these types of interest came in is never going to work. So, took a much more proactive approach and, you know, really hit the ground running with trying to set up as many virtual meetings as possible and demonstrations. And I guess from another aspect too, a lot of companies, you know, the same for their salespeople and their teams, they can't get out and get into the hospitals to talk to doctors. So really this is a good time to kind of look internally at what they're offering and maybe make some new strategic partnerships. All right. So you, you mentioned the virtual uh, meetings. Um, and for some reason lately, uh, there have been a tremendous number of virtual meetings for several companies in in uh, in Ohio and, and throughout the entire world beyond just the two of you. And, and Mark, um, can you tell everyone a little bit about your experience um, 
recently since COVID um, about those virtual meetings in in the various countries we've helped you in? Yeah, I mean, uh, just this week I had a virtual meeting from our uh, Kyvac studio here. Uh, we had about 30 of our distributors from Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Latin America all participate jointly with us in in a virtual uh, kind of roundtable, kind of introducing to them the what we're calling here our company, the virtual pivot, and learning how to do things remotely as well. Uh, I know Andrew, uh, one of my colleagues, who's the Latin American director, um, he and I hosted a number of virtual meetings uh, to interview folks from Peru and, and Colombia and Mexico. Uh, as we were heading into the summer. Um, so, I mean, to Chad's point, I mean, there's so many resources, there's only so many resources that you have in time and the day that you have, especially if you are a smaller company. Uh, you know, the state of Ohio was able to identify very quickly for us uh, a nice little list of prospective partners whom we were then able to meet with uh, virtually and, and have some uh, great discussions, exchange uh, communications with, and then um, still in reminding Tom earlier, we went and kicked the, we went and kicked the tires uh, last summer, 2019, in uh, Peru and Colombia as we we're heading into 2021. So um, we did end up pulling those dealers into our, the dealers that we met with, we were able to find and select some from that pool of candidates and so it's been pretty exciting this year. Uh, despite COVID, we've been able to make an impact in, in two new markets that we would not have been able to reach into uh, otherwise. So even now, you know, we're we're looking to take the uh, partner search for Mexico and see what we can do as we head into 2021 and uh, capitalize on that as well. So I don't know if that answered the question or not. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. Um... Chad, I hope you didn't disappear on them because you're on us because you're next. Um, I do want to we'll talk about how our programs work together, um, specifically right now, the image grant. And of course, you know, some of the details are that um, we'll pay for trade show, help pay for trade shows as well as international marketing trade missions. Um, you know, Mark did take advantage of a trade mission a number of years ago. Um, but Chad, you know, um, I, I believe that we helped you with um, a trade a trade show that we also set up meetings for. Um, and and how did Image help you with that to to, um, to reduce your cost? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I think the trade show you're referring to is Medica, and that's anybody who's in the medical space knows that that's the big the big deal show that takes place in Dusseldorf, Germany, every year. And it's just it's a very large undertaking. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of attendees, and you know. A, 5,000 plus exhibitors and you can kind of get lost in the mix of everything. And if you don't put the proper planning and training into attending, um, you know, you, you really only get out of it what you put into it. So by working with the state of Ohio, you know, we were able to get some funding back uh, from the image grant for our booth costs and shipping stuff out there. But the more important part was, yes, you know, so the setting up of meetings, making it a qualified trade mission. So we were able to save money on our flights and our hotels by doing a certified um, uh, trade mission while at Medica and working with the state of Ohio to set up partners uh, to come meet at our booth. So, you know, using all these programs interchangeably and together is, I think, really important. You really get the most out of your time investment because, if you get 50% reimbursement to go somewhere, you might as well take advantage of the international market support by setting up meetings and you know, making the best use of your time. So we are running a little bit late. Um, I do want to uh, give everyone the opportunity to ask questions, but I do have one additional question for Bre um, for, for Chad. Um, is We have this internship program, and you have participated in it um, for the last few years. Um, and, and I know that there are some impacts specifically in this year's intern um, with the projects we were doing as well as last year's intern. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Nate, Nate did a great job talking about it. I mean, these students are hand-selected, and they are all very passionate about exports. So, you know, they wanted to go in this direction and study these topics about you know, international sales. So when they show up, they've had 
fresh out of a semester long understanding of you know, everything you know, from a very high level perspective and bring a lot of value. So what Tom mentioned is you know, we had our um, intern that was with us over the summer focusing on a lot of new product opportunities and market opportunities. So basically, from a financial analysis, we always have to look at what is the market and what is the opportunity and is it worth our time? So he put all that information to paper in a very you know, easily presentable format. And now we have buy-in on, you know, kind of the direction that we're going to be going with this new product idea and how we're going to be marketing it through what channels and what countries he found to be some of the biggest opportunities. So great program. Great. Thank you very much, both of you gentlemen. Um, um, please um, let us know if we can do anything else. But at this time, um, it is 1.55. I do want to give the attendees an opportunity to ask any questions specifically in the Q&A section. Um, of course, uh, my colleagues Nate and Sarah will be available too, and we can answer them verbally if you have anything. There's one thing I don't like is a moment of silence. Um, so with that in mind, um, Nate, Mark, Chad, do, do any of you have anything else that you'd like to add to this conversation? I think one comment, Tom, you know, we talked about it on a webinar that we were doing a, a week or so ago was, you know, for anybody that's never done anything with, you know, the, the state of Ohio export programs and the various grants and those sorts of things, you know, what would my recommendation be? And, you know, you, you really miss every opportunity that you don't go out and, and try. So if you haven't tried it, you really have nothing to lose. You know, there is the time component. It does require a little bit of your time, but the opportunity that's out there, you know, Nate talked about it, you see these companies that, never exported before in 5, 10, 15 years down the line, you know, they're maybe getting 40, 50 percent of their revenue from international markets. So um, you're never going to find anything if you don't go out and look for it. So that would be my recommendation. So I, I do have um, kind of a softball question for, for both you and Mark is that um, with the image grant and considering that, that um, there are trade shows and trade missions as well as um, as well as travel this included. Um, Mark, um, do you know how much money we've, uh, I guess, saved you or given back to you since we started doing this with you? I mean, we qualify typically every year for the full reimbursement amount. I think we probably averaged about uh, $10,000 a year as a result. I think it's changed over time since its original inception. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's – uh, it's probably given us back about $10,000 worth of expenditures. Uh, this goes for everything from translation activities to, like you're saying, um, market travel related things that are taking place, uh, trade shows and things like that to try to explore and expand um, our footprint. So uh, I think to Chad's point with regard to, you know, the fact that the state of Ohio is standing behind you with an immigrant reimbursement program, um, and resources at the room of the table, there is, there is really all the opportunity, uh, if you're willing to just step out and, and try it. And I think, um, you know, Canada's right across the board. It's an easy one to go into, uh, because there's a lot of similarities. They speak, speak English and a lot of common business practices and expectations as it relates to do the trade. Um, and so, you know, if you're nervous about different things, you know, pick some English-speaking countries where at least you're somewhat speaking the same language, uh, even though we're all separated by the common language that we do speak. Um, but I, I just think that uh, the opportunity is bigger than any kind of reservation, and I think as it relates to how companies, whenever you're doing business internationally, people are keen on uh, U.S.-made products and types of standards that we uphold within our own manufacturing processes. So people are willing to pay a premium uh, from, a, from a price standpoint, from a competitive standpoint. And, um, like I said, I think you just need to get consensus within your, within your team and identify what it is that you want to do uh, organizationally. Start with a limited product portfolio if you have one. That way you can stay tight and focused on what it is that you're doing. Uh, and then 
and then spread your wings and uh, just go for it. Thank you, Mark. I, I do have two questions that I'd like to cover very quickly. One of which, um, a gentleman named John Kelly, um, find what a trade mission is. Um, it's just as a really simple answer to you, John, is that um, there are organizations that send a group of people to a specific location around the world. Um, for example, the one that uh, Mark went on a number of years ago was sponsored by an organization called the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Governors and Premiers, of which we are a member. Um, and uh, once a year, um, or actually twice a year, they have various trade missions to various points of the world. And they take anywhere from eight to 10 companies with them and set predefined meetings. And there's a group and um, there's group uh, events and meals as well as each individual company goes, goes on meetings. It's just kind of a, a good introduction to a country. Um, and, and second, um, we do have a question. Um, can we talk a little bit more about finding international partners, who, how, and timeline? Um, I personally am the program manager of that program, so um, I'd like to speak briefly in about 30 seconds of that. So um, basically what it is is that we speak with you in a counseling call initially to identify what type of company you are looking for, usually a distributor, a partner, a reseller, depending on your business. And our contractors are on that call in that foreign country. And uh, we design a project specifically for you. Um, we first then identify a list of companies that we would deem as a potential partner list. Uh, we send it back to you. Um, you choose the ones you would like us to reach out to. And then it turns out that uh, we qualify them, um, which means that we call them, we email them uh, if, if we need to knock on their door to um, kind of determine their interest, identify the correct person in the company who would be um, potentially working with you. And then um, in this current world, we set up um, meetings. Um, we actually use WebEx to have uh, virtual video meetings with each of these uh, potential clients. Um, when travel starts, of course, we will set up um, a, an individual trade visit, market visit with you to set up the meetings. Um, we will help you on the ground if needed with uh, ground transportation and provide you with the train shelter if you need that as well. Um, I hope that answers your question, Devin. Um, please feel free if anyone has any questions to uh, send an email to exportassistance.development.ohio.gov, G-O-V. Um, Jerry, you want to take us out? Absolutely. Thank you so much to Nate and to Chad and Mark for being with us today and sharing your expertise and your um, experiences with developments programs. Um, I hope everybody on the call uh, will reach out to their export assistance network director. Again, that's the um, map that you saw that Nate has shared with you several times. Uh, in the next couple of days, I will be sending this presentation out to everybody. Uh, who registered for the event, you will have access to all those names and numbers again, and uh, email or, and also the web addresses so that you can look into those programs a little bit more. Your network director will be able to help you understand those programs in more detail, and you can decide if it's best for your company to enroll or uh, begin to participate in these programs. So again, everybody, thank you so much for your time. I wish everybody well, much health. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. It's been a real pleasure. Stay healthy out there.